the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion is on the line. Let's get him on. Cahagas, are you there? Hey, how you doing, guys? Doing all right. Great to have you. Thank you for uh, being on the show and giving us a, a few minutes. Uh, first off, how you doing? I'm good, man. You know, uh, just a, a little off subject real quick. You know, I know you guys up there from the Northeast got a little, you know, issue with pronunciation a lot of times, but it's Cahagas. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's good to know. So, so listen, Cahagas is on the line, the new NWA heavyweight champion. Uh, so you had your first title defense last night. Um, how'd that match go? I, you came out victorious. Uh, how was the match overall? Um, overall, the match was great. Um, you know, me and Damian Wayne, we, we, uh, I can, the only thing I can say is we, we did everything but turn the building upside down. And, uh, you know, we gave people a little bit something to talk about, that's for sure. And, you know, of course, in this business, that's what we want to do. So, so right now, great night, some good house, you know, good crowd, good night, you know, and uh, I'm looking forward to do it again. It's, I mean, you know, and again, I can't congratulate you enough. I mean, right now, where, where you're standing as far as the title you hold, uh, you know, Harley Race, Ricky Steamboat, Ric Flair, I mean, now your name is, is etched in that lineage. How does it feel to be part of that kind of history? Well, I mean, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say it's an honor, you know. I mean, that's something like this, and, and to, to be in a business like this and to actually uh, accomplish what, you know, some of the greats that, that you know, helped create this business and, and established it, you know, and following those footsteps, I mean, it's, you know, it's surreal. I mean, it's, it's definitely an honor to uh, be able to be that guy to, to step up. I'm just curious. So when it came to that championship match, you were not initially, you weren't part of the eight in the, uh, that elimination match. Uh, could you just give us an idea of, of how that whole day unfolded for you? I uh, just landed in Texas and, and uh, check, check my messages. And next thing you know, the next morning I'm heading to Jersey. So, you know, it was, uh, like I said, it just happened so quick. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> Just something that you know, I guess you just go with, you know. It's part of the business, and and you do things, you know, on the fly, and and, and uh, you run with it. So I mean, that's what I did. Oh, just out of curiosity, how often do do you wrestle? How often do I wrestle? Yeah. Um, you know, I've always been fortunate, and I, I've I've always been that guy that that seems to stay booked. Um, you know, my mainstay, you know, my one of my my main promotions out in Florida is Coastal Championship Wrestling, and Florida Underground, and, and uh, you know, I was the guy that, that that worked in South Florida, and the next day he was in North Florida, and then, you know, the next weekend I'm in, you know, New England. You obviously have a manager, so you, you, I'm assuming you like having a manager. Uh, do you think that's something that could be beneficial and you'd like to see perhaps come back in wrestling? With me having managers in my corner, I mean, it definitely helps give me that, you know, that extra mouthpiece and extra little bit of shine that, that's needed, you know, but as far as in the business, sure. You know, I mean, you don't see a lot of it anymore, but, um, you know, it's just something that's just one of those things that's missing right now. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't doubt that it's going to come back around or not, you know, it's, it's just like anything up, what goes up comes back down. And, and, uh, you know, far as, far as anything at any levels, it's the same way, but, you know, I think managers are, are definitely a, a very important, you know, uh, um, position in the wrestling business, and, and like I said, I mean, I, I owe it to a lot of my guys. You know, Rico Casanova's managed me throughout Central America, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and and, and throughout the states. And same way with uh, Kenny G out there in the, the Midwest, Ron Nemi, and, and also Dante Brown of Florida Underground. And uh, I mean, I try to surround myself with people that you know believe in me, and, and I believe in them. And uh, definitely having that extra foot in the corner, you know, it, to me, to me, it helps. You know, you mentioned that you mentioned you wrestled all over the world. Uh, is there distinguishable differences with with crowds or attitude or, or wrestling outside of this country as opposed to coming back to American wrestling? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say I traveled around the world. I mean, I, I've been other places in different countries, 
You know, I mean, I, a lot of people have asked me if I've ever wrestled in Japan. No, I haven't. Have I been to Japan? Yeah. Am I Japanese? Yes. You know, but that doesn't mean I've wrestled there. You know, I'd love to. You know, that would be great. You know, same way without, in the, you know, the European area and, you know, any of that 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 area over there. I've never really reached. I kind of went to areas that a lot of people didn't go. Um, but, you know, and when I say that, um, you know, going to Panama, I went to Panama and, uh, back in, I believe it was in 06. Um, I was invited over there by Hugo Savinovich, which uh, he was a longtime commentator for the WWE. And, um, you know, he kind of gave me a good footstep in, in the right direction. And I went over there with my manager, Rico. And the next thing I know, a week later, I'm in I'm in the Dominican Republic. And the week after that, I'm in Puerto Rico. And then, uh, then you know, it was actually almost a year to the date that, you know, Central America or Panama brought me back into, brought me back into their country. And I ran about a two-year angle with their top guy. And, um, you know, we wrestled all over, you know, Panama. And, um you know, as, as, as far as the crowds and stuff go, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a lot different. You hear a lot of the stories of the old days of Puerto Rico, and yeah, I mean, it's 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 still real. You know, I mean, these people they they want to they want to be entertained. They want to see they want to see wrestling, and you know, just like anything else, they get hyped up. You know, they they're all about it, and, and um, it can get scary at times. Definitely, you know, I mean, I've caught myself in situations going, "Where the hell? They don't have security over here," you know. But <laughs> you know, what do you do? You know, just keep going. But uh, um, it's definitely a lot different. And, and I, I mean, I'm, you know, it sucks to say, but more or less like somewhat third world countries. Um, it definitely, the crowds are, are a lot different. You know, you don't have that smart crowd where. You know, they, they go with the chance or they, you know, try to be smart and pre, you know, predetermine everything and get on the internet and try to, you know, root everybody out and all that. You know, it has, there's nothing like that. It's a totally blind side over there. You know, what they see is what they see when they walk in the building. And, um, you know, it's kind of neat because it, it does kind of kick back to make, you know, make you think, wow, this is, this is how it was. You know, when you're driving down the road and you get a flat, you ain't got a cell phone to help you, you know, and, and, um, you know, in those type of places, it's still like that. And, you know, so, I mean, I, I think it's more old school in countries like that. And when you go over there and you don't understand anybody's language or anything, they don't understand you either and see that, that there is wrestling in all these different areas. And that, that's kind of like one of my goals and kind of looking at possibly doing them. I'm in talks with different countries right now that basically haven't ever seen a world title or it's been decades since there's ever been a world title there. And, um, um, I've got a lot of talks going on with that the, in that type of a situation. So, you know, hopefully every everything pans out and, you know, we get rolling and, and I do what I need to do with this thing. That's awesome. Well, you know, you, you got the right title to go from country to country. Uh, I, uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us tonight. Uh, before we let you go, uh, anything you'd like to promote going forward? You know, I just would definitely say just keep your eye on the NWA because, you know, everything's unpredictable in this business. and. Right now, I think the NWA is in that position, too. But, um, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on. I know we were going to do this last week, and things kind of changed. But, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys following up and we're doing this. And, and one thing I will say, it was great to see Carlos in New Jersey <laughs> a couple weeks ago. But uh, I, just had to, I just had to throw that in there for him. Yeah, it's, it's uh, funny because Car Carlos is actually here right now. We have uh, cameras provided by the Savoldis and NWA on fire. They wanted to do, get us some TV time as well. So Carlos is actually in studio <laughs> quietly filming. So I'll make sure the NWA champ says hello. So <laughs> he says hi. <laughs> but thanks, yeah, you know, again, really appreciate it. Hope we have you on uh, again. And uh, good luck. Be safe. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Appreciate it, man. Thanks very much. Thanks. Take care. Well, and there you have it. Cor corrected on the pronunciation, Cahagas. Um, well, I, I, I wasn't the only one pronouncing it that way, but uh, Cahagas, the NWA world champion, uh, here with us, uh, giving us uh, some stories. Great to hear from him. Uh, most prestig prestigious belt in wrestling history, and uh, he was right here on the Ken Reedy Show. And, and I, I have to thank, uh, like I just mentioned, the Savoldi family uh, from NWA on Fire, uh, not only are they providing the cameras here today uh, in studio, 
But they, they also did a lot of legwork to get Cahagas on the show tonight uh, to talk to him. So I got to send my thanks out to them. So be sure to check out. I mean, as you're following the NWA, be sure to watch NWA on Fire on Me TV every Friday with yours truly doing commentary. And, uh, you know, check out the website, nwaonfire.com, to check out what's going on with them.